Hello everyone. How's everybody doing today? This is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. This is Noella Perry just coming on to say hello. Amen. And to just give you some encouraging words. Um, yesterday we celebrated Palm Sunday. And I'm not sure if every one of you know what Palm Sunday is. It's, a, it's the Sunday when Jesus came riding on a donkey and the people took the palms down and they waved it, the palm, you know, the palm leaves down from the palm tree. And they waved it before him and they said, um, Hosanna, who's, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Hosanna to him in the highest. Amen. And this is a, a, a fulfillment of prophecy because it has been prophesied in the Old Testament. Amen. In the book of Psalms. Amen that the Messiah would come, amen, hallelujah, and they would wave the palms before him, <clears throat> amen, hallelujah. So we know the story of, of Jesus, our Savior, amen. He came and he died for us um, so that we would have a right to the tree of life. Um, and we know a lot of things that happened. Judas betrayed him and, you know, sold him out for 30 pieces of silver, but that was after, you know, um, the, um, after the Palm Sunday experience, because this is leading up to his passion, amen? The pa you know the movie, The Passion of Christ? I know some of you saw it, amen? And it showed you how Jew Jesus was, he was crucified, you know, he crucified, they crucified him, how they, you know, how they, the, the life he lived when he was on this earth, they, they tried to picture, you know, how his life was and, you know, how he was crucified and how when he was on the cross, how they pierced him in the sunset. But you know what? The, don't matter how much movies they come up with or that can't do any justice for how our savior really suffered. You know, um, I guess you had to really been there to really see how he suffered, you know, and, you know, even if you were there to see it, you, we, we can't feel it, you know, because it's not us, you know, we, we are not the ones that were crucified and was whipped. Amen. So they tried to depict this passion of Christ and, um, to give an, a little example of how it was, but we really don't know what he went through, what he experienced, you know, but this is the week yesterday was leading up until the few days that he'd be crucified. And you know what happened to people, you know, you no, know, some of the people in those days, they had the wrong idea of who Jesus was and why he came some of them wanted him to overthrow the government the roman empire the roman government the king um they wanted him to bring freedom from oppression but what jesus came the first time to do was to bring freedom from sin he came to reconcile us back to god because the Bible says, Romans 3, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. None of us are righteous. None of us, nothing that we can do can make us right with God. Amen. And that's why back in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice the lambs. Amen. The, light, the lambs couldn't have no blemish. Amen. They couldn't have no broken leg. They couldn't have a missing eye. You know, because God required a perfect sacrifice. But no matter, no matter how much they sacrifice, you know, the animals once a year, whatever, because there were different sacrifices with different animals, but the atonement for sin was done once a year. And no matter how much they did it, they brought the animals in to make atonement for this. They would still go back and sin because all of us are born in sin and shape and iniquity. Amen. We were conceived in sin. Amen. Even if your mother and your father were married, amen, you're still born in sin because Adam and Eve, our first parents, they sinned against God. They disobeyed God. So everybody that's born into this earth is born with a sinful nature. And that's why we needed a savior. And that's why Jesus came and died for us. He sacrificed his life. He didn't have to do it. Amen. He came. Philippians chapter 2 said it. Amen. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, didn't think it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bond servant. He came to die for us. Greater love that no man has than this, and he will lay down his life for his friends. How many of us are willing to lay down our lives for each other? How many parents are willing to lay down their life for their children? How many parents are willing to sacrifice the lives of their children? I'll tell you, if it was me, I couldn't do it. I can't do it. 
You know, but God did it. God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. Amen. And so this was the only reason. This was the only way. Amen. Because I believe that if there was another way that we could have been redeemed, God wouldn't have had his son suffer like that. Amen. And so Jesus came. He's a fulfillment of the law. He came. He's the lamb of God that was slain from the foundations of the earth. He's the lamb of God that taken away the sins of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. That's in John chapter one. You can find that. Amen. And so he came. And he sacrificed his life. But right before the crucifixion on the Sunday was Palm Sunday. And you see, like I was saying, because the, some of the people had the wrong idea of who, what Jesus came for, his purpose. So when they saw him coming on that donkey, amen, hallelujah, he came and the people waved the palms. Hosanna, Hosanna, man, so you know, he was who he who was saved. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So they give our Savior praise and worship. Hallelujah. But then a couple days later, they were talking about crucify him, crucify him, away with him. Because give us Barabbas. Because what they were thinking and expecting Jesus to do to bring them freedom from oppression, he didn't come to do that. He came to bring us freedom from sin. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Jesus came to bring us freedom from sin. And so when, they, they, when, you know, when Jesus won't do what they think he should have done, that is crucify him. Crucify him. That's one of the reasons. Crucify him. Give us Barabbas. So Barabbas was a thief. He was a scoundrel. And usually on the specific day, they had a choice of who they wanted to be released. And so instead of they releasing Jesus Christ, our Savior, who was innocent, they decided they want Barabbas to be released. Come on now. But you know what? That happened so that the scriptures will be fulfilled. Because Jesus had to die. He came and suffered for us. And I'm here to tell you today and encourage you. I know some of us, that's how hap what happened with us. We got people on our job, our family members. And when you do a good job or you do something right, hey, they praise you. They give you praise. They give you accolades. Come on now. You did a good job, my sister. You did a good job, my brother. And then a couple of days later, another week, who he think he is? Who she think she is? They ain't nobody. You know, that praise that they give you that day, it turns to scorn a couple of days later, a couple of weeks later. A couple months later, they turned their back on you. The people that was giving you all that praise, amen, and encouraging you. Then later on, they turn their back on you. They reject you. They, they, they abandon you. They walk away from you. They say bad things about you, bad things to your face. That's what they did with Jesus. Crucify him. And so a lot of people, a lot of us, we're being crucified. You know what? With, um, with the mouths of people. Because people are saying all kind of negative and bad things about us. But I'm here to encourage you. Because even though they did, that, they did that to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, guess what? When he went to the cross, hallelujah, and he was crucified and he died and was buried, he rose again with all power in his hands. So I'm here to tell you, them people that are crucifying you, those people that are backstabbing you, people talking about you, come on. One minute they're your friends and the next minute they're not your friends. One minute they're saying good things about you and the next thing they're talking about you behind your back or they might be saying bad things to your face. That's okay. You know, love them anyway. And that's why when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. See, when they were crucifying Jesus, they didn't know there was fulfilling prophecy. Some of them didn't know that. And they were fulfilling prophecy. Hallelujah. Because the word of God said that Jesus Christ was coming. The Messiah was going to come. Come on. Isaiah chapter 9. Come on. Verse 6. Isaiah chapter 7. Verse 14. Talks about the Messiah. Come on. Talks about the virgin was going to bring forth a son. And they was going to call his name Emmanuel. Meaning God with us. And even Jesus Christ. Come on now. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. It says this in Matthew chapter 1. He's Emmanuel, meaning God with us. God himself, the creator of heaven and earth, stepped out of glory and came down here and died for me and you. So we wouldn't have to spend eternity in hell. So we wouldn't have to stay separated from him. Amen. 
We can have that. We can have life and have it more abundantly. According to John chapter 10, verse 10. Come on. Hallelujah. So I'm here to encourage you. Keep doing your part. You know, don't try to get revenge on nobody. Come on, people talking bad about you. Going and telling the boss and the supervisor, look at what she did. Look at what he did. He not doing his job. Don't worry about it. And I understand sometimes it hurts when people turn their back on you, when people scandalize you, when people backstab you in the back. But they did it to Jesus. But what did Jesus do? He still went to the cross. He still stayed on the cross. He could have came down. When they were saying, save yourself and us, come down from that cross. He didn't come down. He stayed up there because he came for purpose. And you got a purpose. We all got a purpose in this life. But everybody's not going to like you. Especially if you're a Christian. Come on, now. If they did it to Jesus, they're going to do it unto us. And so we got to expect persecution. But the Lord said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men will revile you and persecute you and say all manners of evil against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For so, prophets, so, for so persecuted the prophets which will be for you. So be encouraged, my brothers and my sisters. Keep doing the right thing. Keep serving God. Because God said, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. You ain't got to get revenge on nobody. Amen. You just keep being the light that the Lord say you are. Because he said, we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. So keep being salt. Keep being light. Let God fight your battles. Because the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's. Stand still and see his salvation. Because in the midst of all this persecution... <clears throat> In the midst of all the things that we're going through, God is going to bring judgment. God is going to bring vengeance. It belongs to him. So you don't got to try and get back at nobody. You ain't got to try to prove to nobody or prove to the bosses that what they're saying about you is wrong. Amen. If they call you into the office, come on now, and you got to give an account, come on, speak boldly. Trust God to bring you out of this. Trust the Holy Spirit to speak through you. Amen. Because I'm telling you, the truth is going to come forth. All the lies and the things that people are spreading about you, the truth is going to come forth. God knows how to expose the work of darkness. God knows how to expose lies. He knows what to do. But be still. Don't let the Lord fight your battles. Because the battle don't belong to us, it belongs to the Lord. And in this life, we're going to be faced with challenges and storms. Things are going to come up. In our personal life, come on now. On the job, in the church, wherever. But seek God. Stay in faith. Stay prayed up. Keep the armor on. Ephesians chapter 6. Have your loins girded about with the truth. Have on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Come on, because God don't want us fighting back and, and, you know. No, he wants us to be at peace. He didn't fight our battles. So you stay, keep your peace with God. Because peace comes from him. Take up the, take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Come on. Have on, the, have on the helmet of salvation. Got to, to pick up the helmet of salvation. Take up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the devil. Mm. He going to come with some fiery darts. He doing it every day. But you stand and have it not all to stand. Stand with the armor on. You don't got to fight no battles. You don't got to go up against nobody's head. You don't got to cuss nobody out. Let God fight your battle. And I know sometimes it's not easy. When you're doing the right thing, you're trying to live right. You're doing the right thing, but yet people will lie on you. Scandalize your name. Praise you today, hate you tomorrow. Praise you today, say something bad about you tomorrow. That's okay. They did it to Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He kept moving on. He kept pressing was the mark he kept pressing because he knew there was purpose he knew what was going to happen 
when he continue on, come on, Philippians chapter 2 said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising his shame. Now he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God in the name of Jesus. So Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that you would strengthen your people, build him up, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, those who are going through persecution, whether it's in the home, whether it's in the job, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying that you will strengthen them, Father God. Build them up, oh God. Heal their hearts, Father God. That they betrayal, Father. The ones who talk about them, Father. The ones who scandalize their names, Father. The ones who are lying on them, Father. I'm praying that you will strengthen them and you will build them up. You will heal their hearts and help them to forgive. For you said we don't forgive others from the heart. You will not forgive us. In the name of Jesus, remind us that you would fight our battles. Remind us, Father, that you said in your word, hallelujah, to be ye steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Help us, Father, in the name of Jesus, to keep pressing on, Father. In the name of Jesus, help us not to throw in the tower, Father. But help us to hold on in the name of Jesus until our change come. Help us to hold on, Father. Because you will fight our battles. Give us guidance, Father, in the name of Jesus. Show your people what to do in the situations and the storms that's in their life, Father. Help them not to get weary and well-doing. For in due season, you say, we would reap if we faint not. Hallelujah. So continue to keep them covered under the blood. Guide your people. Protect them, Father. Sustain them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I'm asking you today, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, Today is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Don't put it off. Amen. John 3, 6, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4 is the gospel. Christ died, was buried, rose again on the third day. Amen. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name on the heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And it's at the name of Jesus. He's the only one that can save you. Doing good works is not going to save you. Amen. You do good works after you get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's not going to make you right with God. Amen. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. For with a heart man believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Shall be delivered. God bless you. Amen. This is Pastor Noella Perry coming to you. Amen. From Divine Purpose Deliverance Ministry in Virginia. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. Come on, be encouraged. Amen. Hallelujah. Resurrection Sunday is coming. We got Good Friday coming. Amen. And we got to remember what the Lord has done for us. Amen. It, was, it wasn't such a good Friday in the natural. Amen. Because he suffered a lot, but it was a good Friday for us. Amen. Because, because he rose from the dead. We have eternal life. Amen. We have the things that God has planned for us. Amen. We are sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Remember that if you're born again, go to John chapter 3. God has raised you up and allow you to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed Resurrection Sunday. Have a blessed Good Friday. Amen. God bless you.